The next speaker in the session is Dr. Mikhail Lopez Suarez. He received his bachelor's and PhD in physics from the Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona right. and is now a postdoc fellow at the Universita in Perugia, Italy. Most of his research is focused on the study of non dissipative computations at device level. And what he's going to be talking about today is the minimum energy limits required to operate micromechanical logic gates. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank the, the moderator and also the organizers for giving me the opportunity of presenting here my, my work. Well, this is a work um, I've done together with Igor Neri and Luca Gamaitoni at the uh, University of Perugia in Italy. And what I'm going to, to explain to you here is the, is, uh, well, I'm going to show you the, the measurements on energy dissipation um, on a Lo uh, logically irreversible uh, logic gate implemented with a micromechanical uh, system. So this is a, a summary of the presentation. First of all, I'm going to, to introduce you to the Landauer reset and the quantities we use in order to evaluate which is the minimum heat that we need to spend in order to uh, reset a bit of information. Second, uh, I'm going to present the technical aspects of um, our experiment. And finally, I'm going to show you the, the, the main results we, we obtained <coughs> during this experiment. So let's start with the, first with the first point. First of all, why do we care about energy dissipation? Well, we, know, we all know that this is one of the, of the, main, the main drawbacks we are uh, facing nowadays in order to fabricate and to obtain the new generation of computers with... Um, with more, uh, more speed and, and less power. And we know that heat is um, related with entropy. And this is a very nice picture in order to show what entropy does to, to physical systems. We have here a glass with coffee and milk. And we know that physical systems evolve toward the most probable state. This means that you will always see that this glass evolves toward this situation here. And it's very, very unlikely to see this, the, the, the system evolves the other, the, the other uh, way around. But what has this to do with computation or with information? Well, at the end of the day, uh, an operation, it's nothing but a change of the physical state. So you can think about this uh, like a computing system. For sure, it's not the best way to, to perform computation, but it could serve. So in the following, I'm going to show you... Um, how to apply these expressions here to the uh, rested operation of a, of a bit of information. A bit of information could, for example, uh, be encoded in a system like this. This is a particle in a box where you can put uh, a wall in the middle of the, of the box in order to, um, to set the, the logical states. This means that if you have the particle in the left part of the box, you have the zero logical state. If you have the particle in the right part, then we are talking about the, 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 the one logic state. And the reset operation means that you start with 50% of probabilities of having the particle here and 50% here. And after applying a protocol of forces, end up with a distribution where you have the particle 100% sure uh, of being in the, in the, in the left uh, part of the box. So one way to do this is starting from this configuration here we remove the wall and let the particle evolve freely inside the box. Then push from the right um, in order to reset the, the, the wall in the middle of the box. And in this way, we, we, we are sure that at the end of the protocol, we, we will end up with a particle in the left part. So let's apply these expressions here to know which is the minimum amount of heat that we need to spend in order to do this operation. Well, in the initial state, we have an entropy equal to KBT log 2. These are very simple maths applying this, these expressions here. In the final state, where we are 100% sure that we have the particle in the left part of the, of the box, we have um, an entropy equal to KBT log 1. And therefore, the difference on entropy would be minus KBT log 2. And therefore, the minimum, I repeat, the minimum amount of heat that you need to spend in order to do this um, complete operation is minus KBT log 2. Well, this is uh, also known as uh, the Landauer uh, bound or Landauer limit. And 
this kind of operation represents uh, what is called uh, logically reversible um, computation or uh, operations. And this is because by the sole knowledge of the final state, it's impossible to know which was the initial state. In fact, if I told you that at the end of the operation I have the particle in the left part of the, of the box, you cannot tell me what, which was, the, which were, which was the, the initial state. However, uh, we often heard about the, uh, a generalization of, of this, of this um, process that say that every logically reversible operation needs to, um, to produce heat, to dissipate energy. For example, you can apply this to, this, these are two, two tables for a, uh, an AND gate, uh, an OR gate, and this can be applied to this because, of course, this, these two are uh, uh, logically reversible operations since, for example, if, if I tell you that we have a zero in the output, you cannot tell me which were the, the inputs and the same for the, the OR gate. And this uh, would be the um, two possible implementations of these uh, truth tables here. We, we are implementing this with transistors. But there is a very strong difference between these systems here, these implementations, and uh, the system I showed before, the, the particle in a box. And this is that uh, transistors are not base stable. In fact, this is the, the typical current voltage uh, relation for a transistor. You see here that uh, as higher the voltage in the gate, the higher the current is uh, flowing through the channel. But the important thing here is that once you remove the voltage, once you remove the forces uh, in the gate, the state of the system returns back to its original state, which is current equal to zero. This is very different um, to what happened with the, with the particle in a box I showed before. In fact, we say that um, we are dealing with a system that behaves more like a slight rule, which is this guy here. It's an instrument to, to do computation where we have um, uh, forces as, as inputs and the particularity that um, the change in internal energy of the system after the computation and after removing the, the forces, it's, it's uh, zero. So our intention is to implement this kind of, of systems in order to, to perform some logical operations and see uh, which is the, the heat uh, produced during the, the operation of, of this um, logic operations. So this is a, a representation of the system uh, we considered. We have here a, a, a cantilever with these two electrostatic probes. They are in charge of applying the, the inputs to the system. So the, the once you rise the, the voltage here, the cantilever uh, polarizes and therefore an attractive electrostatic force appears and, and the, the cantilever bends. And it's this bending, this deflection of the cantilever that we, uh, we consider the, to be the output of the, of the logic gate. In order to track the, the deflection of the cantilever, we use this kind of AFM-like um, setup where the deflection of the cantilever is translated into a, a deflection of the, of the laser beam. And this two quad photodetector gives us a, a change on a tension. However, this is just the, the way we, we measure the, the output of the, of the logic gate. Well, if we model our system like a particle, our system, I mean the, the cantilever, as a particle inside a monostable parabolic um, uh, potential energy, mm, we say that if we apply a, a voltage in one of these two of these two electrostatic probes we move from here to here. If we apply um, voltage on both tips, we end up here. And the thing is, it depends on where you put the threshold that this, uh, this logic gate can operate as, um, as a NOR gate if you put the threshold here, or as an end gate if you put the threshold here. Or it has nothing to do with dissipation, it's just a matter of uh, interpretation of the output of the system. So, this, is, uh, this panel here uh, shows the time evolution of the, of the system when you rise the voltage in one of the two tips. We see here that uh, rising the voltage uh, means that the, the cantilever starts to bend. In this position, we, in this um, 
in this point here we have the maximum displacement of the of the cantilever so here is where we uh, read the the output of the system and then after removing the voltage we recover the the initial condition where the system uh, continues oscillating around the zero here we can see the the probability density function of the position of the cantilever as a function of the inputs that we are um, um, introducing we have here for the zero zero that the system oscillates around the zero position that's natural for the one one input we have that the system uh, oscillates around more or less 1.1 nanometers while for the mixed state 0 1 or 1 0 we have this superposition of the of this gaussian like um, distributions and it's because of this that we say that we are dealing with a um, logically irreversible logic gate because if i tell you that my system is oscillating around around 0 0.9 uh, nanometers you cannot tell me which were the input 0 1 or 1 0 Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to, um, to measure the position of the, of the cantilever for these different um, possibilities for the inputs. Then we are going to evaluate the Statonovich integral in order to obtain the work performed on the system and therefore obtaining uh, the, the heat produced during the operation. And we are going to do this for a uh, thousand times uh, for each input in order to have a sound um, treatment of the of the results. May I interrupt? Uh, it, it, it seems like at a certain point during your talk, you told us that you wanted to do computing like a slide rule, so that uh, you, would sl you would use the slide rule and everything would be back where it started from. There would be no energy cost to co computing. So I'm saying to myself, I have to pay very, very close attention because there's going to be a trick, and if I blink, I'll miss the entire trick. Uh, so have I missed it yet? Or, uh, no, I, I don't get it. Sorry, <laughs> sir. Uh, is your goal to achieve computing at zero energy cost? Yep. And but, um, not well computing. If you consider this uh, computing, yes. If you if you consider this operation here as computing, yes, it, it's the same. Here, when you remove the the inputs, you 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 have nothing. You and I go back to the original energy. It cost me nothing. Yeah. At um, uh, it cost you something if. Uh, after the computation, you decide to put um, coupled to this system a base table, a memory. At this point, if you, you, you need to dissipate. So you're not saying the, there's not the, not the logical computation, but the, the, memor the memorization, memorization of the, of the information. Okay, you're saying the memory is going to be the trick. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's not the trick, I mean. Okay. Well, finally. Uh, I'm going to, to show you the, the results on the heat production of these uh, kind of, of systems. Here we can see the, um, the heat dissipated for, uh, for the, the logic gate I showed. Uh, here we have the, the protocol time, the duration of the, of the, the, um, of the protocol uh, of the forces. So we can see here that for longer times we have uh, less and less dissipation. This is normal because you are achieving the adiabatic uh, regime. But even for uh, times um, in the order of one milliseconds, we have dissipations that are below uh, KBT. Of sure, this millisecond, it's not a, um, a time that can be considered to, to be implemented a, a new technology. But however, we can see that in, for all times, we have dissipations below KBT. This uh, corresponds, uh, you can see here, the red points for the 1-1 one, one input and the blue and green for the mixed states. Uh, of course, I, I didn't put here the, 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 the data for the 0, 0, because obviously it's 0 always. In this uh, right panel, you can see the probability distribution of the, um, of the values for the heat. Uh, in this case, for a time protocol of 9 milliseconds at 2.5 volts, this corresponds to this point here. And the point here is that we can see that uh, even, we have, even if we have uh, negative values for the heat, the, the important point here is that the mean value of this distribution is always positive in good agreement with the second law of thermodynamics. Just to, this is not a trick. Well, finally, this is my last slide. I just want to point out that um, um, we have also been able to couple this kind of systems in order to perform other kind of logic operations. 
This is the original uh, logic gate, the OR. And you can see here the response of the OR gate in the black line here to the different inputs that we are putting into the system. And by putting this in front of the first cantilever, this second one here, we are able to negate the output of the first cantilever. You can see here in the, in the, uh, with the red line that we are negating the output of the, of the first cantilever. Well, and this would be all if you have questions. Thanks for your attention. Sorry? Sorry? Is it spring loaded or does it just bend and, and stay bent? It bends and then it returns back if you remove the forces. It, it bends and returns to its original place once you re Yeah, once you, re you remove the forces, right. So I don't get the slide rule part. Well, yeah, the slide rule, you mean that the slide rule, if you, if you move the different parts, then it remains there. You mean this, right? In this case, it's like the, the different parts have uh, uh, spring that brings the, the, the different parts to the original position. The thing is that um, inputs are, uh, are forces and that you can um, operate this, uh, you can drive these kind of instruments without spending energy. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Berkeley. So the question I have is that in the end, you're, you, you can, you're getting still a digital output from this. So there's a threshold detection, and the threshold detection is also going to potentially have an energy cost. Yeah. So if I surround this by sort of a black box and view it, view it as an abstract system, in the end, still it seems like the Landauer limit applies because still I'm getting a one zero sort of result, and I don't care about the details inside the black box, which may involve a, sprint, a cantilever. So, you know, I mean, as, as long as I'm reducing this, analog, this sort of continuous position in the end to a digital result, it seems like the, the um, reduction in entropy still has to occur. Or is that not correct? The I'm, reduction I'm on, on entropy, you, you mean that here we have a, a, an entropy reduction? Well, in, if, I, if I subtract that, if I take this cantilever experiment, right, which has this deflection and it has some sort of threshold detection and then that results in some sort of one zero number, Right, that's an, that's a system, right? And I can I can just put it in a black box, and then the output of that is a one or a zero, right? So well, this is a it's not a one. Well, it's not a well. One once you add the threshold detection, continuous response of the of the system. I mean, I mean, but it seems like you're it seems like you're analyzing the system in the absence of the threshold detector. I didn't get the the, the point. Well, I mean, the Sorry. Landauer Landauer argument is a very general argument that it says that as long as you're can taking a system that has an initially undetermined state, and then you're getting a determined state out of it, you're reducing the, en the ent entropy. And therefore, when you reduce the entropy, you're reduce, you, it requires enthalpy in order to balance that. So the thing is, the question is, I mean, it seems that viewing your system more in the abstract rather than just looking at the, detect at the yeah, cantilever deflection, it still seems like there would have to be an energy cost. Well, my point here is that actually what, uh, when you operate this kind of, of logic gates, you have no, no indetermination in, in the initial state, right? You have zero always. Right. The, the point is that this statement here has been generalized to all kind of uh, logical irreversible operations. Among them, to this kind of, of um, logic gates. When, what, what I'm trying to demonstrate, what, what I'm trying to, to, to show is that that's not true. Okay. I'm not saying that, I mean, if you have a reduction of entropy, for sure you, 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 you will end up with a heat dissipation, for sure. Right. Okay. Okay. So I missed something. I apologize. Thank you very much. So we did have one more question. I'm afraid this is going to be a dumb question, but <laughs> I still don't get the difference between physical and logical reversibility, and I don't see what's not physically reversible. You don't see why this is physically reversible? It is physically reversible. This is right. physically reversible. So I'm missing where the logical irreversibility comes in. Well, uh, do you agree with me that we are performing this operation here? I don't know. <laughs> I have to go through it in detail. Sorry? I have to work through it in detail. Well, this is. Let's say we are, yes. 
Okay, and this is a logically reversible operation? It's repre you're representing it by a physically reversible system, so I think that your truth table is incomplete in some sense. I, that's what I'm worried about. Okay, can you point out which is the missing part? Please? I think we should discuss it later, thanks. Okay. They're all worried about the trick. Yeah. Let me remind one. everybody there is a break after this session, so there's, there'll be an opportunity for more questions. Well, I just, I just uh, didn't catch exactly how you measured the energy dissipation. And in these kinds of experiments, it's very crucial to calibrate. Yep. You know, and the calibration is, is often really a, a key part of the yep. experiment. I, didn't, I, I must have missed something, but did you explain how you did no, that? No, I, I actually I skipped this part just because... It's kind uh, of the key part. Uh, <laughs> From the technical point of view, that it is well, we have this um, integral here. Uh, by evaluating this integral, we get the work performed on the system and therefore the, the the heat. So the point here is to to obtain the the Hamiltonian of the of the system to evaluate this for different protocols. Um, the Hamiltonian is just the, the, potential en the elastic potential energy of the cantilever plus the electrostatic forces. So what we did is a calibration of the electrostatic forces that we are applying with the electrostatic probes, putting, putting them into this, this shape here and, therefore, and then putting it into the, into the Hamiltonian in the shape of a um, uh, potential energy. And therefore, the, the elastic uh, potential energy is just uh, half of kx squared. Okay. I'm sorry, I skipped this part because we had only 15 minutes, so <laughs> it's... Well, let's thank the speaker again.